In the classical three-coin problem, given R3 identically looping coins, but one of them is false. It is either lighter or heavier than genuine one. Using a balance, one has to identify the false coin and estimate its weight. To solve the problem, it's necessary to do at least two weightings. If the number of coins increases, the number of weightings also increases. In this video, it is shown how to identify the false coin among any number of coins without using the balances. For the first side, it is absolutely impossible. But physics and logic will help. Let's go. First, uh, we formulate the problem. We have more than two coins on the frictionless table. Coins are identical in weight except one, which has different weight. In one step, find that coin and determine whether it is heavier or lighter than a genuine one. By doing this, uh, you don't need to use the balance. It's clear that we need something to compare the weight of the coin. And instead of balance, we will use for this purpose the feature of such a physical phenomenon as elastic collision. And uh, these features we will review right now. Let's suppose uh, we have two objects, in our case it's two coins, with masses M1 and M2. One of them is at rest, and we will call this coin as target. Another one moves toward target, and we will call this coin projectile. Projectile hits the target, and they move with velocities v1 final and v2 final. Uh, this velocity can be calculated using the equations which uh, you can find at any textbook on mechanics. At this point I would like to draw your attention to the fact that velocity v1f depends on the difference between masses of these coins. And for this reason, this velocity can be positive or negative. In the last case, it moves in opposite direction of the collision. Now we consider the cases which one can meet considering elastic collision of two objects. First case is exactly the same as we considered above. Two coins collide and move in the same direction. It means that uh, V1F is positive. So M1 is greater than M2. So the first coin is heavier than the second. What does it mean for us? Uh, it means that the masses of these coins are different, and because there is only one false coin, it is one of these two coins. In the second case, the coins at the collision moves in opposite directions. So V1 final is negative. It means that M1 is smaller than M2, so this coin is a lighter coin. Again, false coin is one of these two. And finally, the third possible case is uh, when the first coin projectile stops after collision and the target moves with the initial velocity of the projectile. In this case, we see that masses of these two coins are equal, and for this reason, both of them are genuine. We will mark uh, these coins with blue color. Now we can proceed to the general case of multiple coins. First, uh, what we do working with multiple coins, we align them along straight line, and then push first coin, and uh, after this we will observe the collisions. The goal is to identify the situation when collisions leads to motion of both colliding coins, either in the same direction or in opposite direction. In this case, the false coin is among all these two or all these two. Let's watch the video.
So we saw that uh, these two coins, after collision, were moving in opposite directions. So this case corresponds to the following situation. And the previous coins stopped because uh, they were genuine coins. For this reason, actually, we don't need to consider all of them. We need, uh, in our analysis, restrict ourselves uh, with the case when the uh, one of these situations appears after a small number of collisions, maybe one or two. Let's illustrate this on the following examples. We watch carefully. We see here that these two points after collision move in opposite directions. So the second case takes place here and uh, the false coin is among of them. All others are normal. And uh, this coin is also normal because if you remember, after collision, it was moving in the same direction as the first coin. We can conclude that the false coin is this one, and because the normal coin bounced back from the false coin, the false coin is more heavy than the normal. The next case is a little bit different from the previous. Let's watch. We see that these two coins of the collision move in the same direction. So the false coin is among of them. All others are genuine. This coin is also genuine because here we have this case. From this picture, we can conclude that this genuine coin is heavier than false. So the false coin is lighter than genuine coin. Now let's consider the next case. We saw that after collision, these two coins move in the same direction. So the false coin is one of them. All others are genuine coins. Because this coin stopped, it is also a genuine one. And uh, applying this situation to our case, we see that the false coin is heavier than a genuine one. The next situation is a little bit different from previous. What we saw. These two coins after collision are moved in opposite directions. So the false coin is among them. All others are genuine coins, including the stopped coin. The false coin was rebound, so it is at uh, this case it and it is lighter than the genuine one. In all previously considered cases, one of the colliding coins stopped. But this is not mandatory, and we will see this right now. What we saw, that these two coins moved after collision in opposite directions, and these two coins moved in the same direction. So the false coin is among these two coins, and among these two coins. The only possibility is that this coin is a false one, and all others are genuine coins. The false coin is heavier than a genuine one, according both to this consideration and this consideration. The next case is similar to previous. Let's watch. We saw that these two coins moved in the same direction of the collision, and these two in opposite directions. For this reason, the false coin is this one, and all others are genuine coins. The false coin 
bounced from the genuine one, and for this reason it is lighter than a genuine one. Finally, uh, we consider the close to the end of the chain of coins. But I believe uh, you can do this analysis yourself. And in the conclusion, we solve the problem of multiple coins in one step. So we are able to find false coin among a lot of genuine coins and determine whether it is heavier or lighter than a genuine coin.